And then we're just going to chat for a couple of minutes and I want to pray for you guys. And again, I'm really hoping and believing that you're going to be filled with just some, some righteous fervor and some fire um, from this. You know how important it is to have people that speak into your life? Um, and, 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 and what I mean by that is not someone who controls you, but people who can speak into your life. And you guys know when you're choosing somebody or when it seems like God brought somebody along your path to speak into your life, there's a couple of things that you guys are going to want to look for. And the number one thing is going to be, what's the fruit of their life like, right? And the number two thing is going to be, do you want that fruit? Is that the kind of fruit that you want in your life, right? Um, I had a dream uh, a couple of nights ago, and I'm not going to share the whole dream, dream here because I'm limited on time right now, but I did share it last night um, on our live stream for, for, for the Church 14 community, which is our ministry community here in Myrtle Beach. If you guys are not following that page, go to Church 14 Hub Myrtle Beach page right here on Facebook, Church 1-4, okay, no spaces, Hub Myrtle Beach, you'll see it, it'll pop up, it's got like a C-1-4 with the ocean behind it, and watch our most recent um, gathering, which was at the time of doing this live video, it was last night, um, and at the very beginning of when I start speaking, I share that dream, but it was it was kind of a, you know, it wasn't like a real heavy dream, but it did seem kind of as a, an admonishing dream, where the Lord was just kind of like, hey, um, encourage people to remember not to be distracted because the times that we're living in right now, you know, we can't afford to be distracted. Uh, and when we're distracted, we make stupid decisions. Not that you don't at other points, but you seem to make more stupid de decisions. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're distracted and we're just kind of flip-flopping all over the place. And so I want to offer you guys a couple of things I feel like the Lord has given me, um, to give to you today. But before I do that, I just want to go on and, and make sure I can see. Sometimes, it, for some reason, it doesn't show me the comments. So if you guys are commenting, um, sometimes it gets funny about showing me the comments. So go ahead and say hi. Let, let me know that you guys are watching. And then I'm going to see uh, if I can get on these, get on these comments here. Okay. Oh, I think it's because I have to switch into a different page. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Taylor, I see you. What's up? Okay. So I, I can see, I can see some of the comments. It's awesome. Taylor, thank you for joining us. Last night was awesome. We're so excited about how God is using you. And, um, yeah. And so I just want to talk about that for a minute. And the Lord gave me this scripture and it's, uh, in second Corinthians chapter three, verse two, the Apostle Paul says, you are our letter, um, our living epistle inscribed on our hearts, known and read by everyone. And hey, Brooke, good to see you, Brooke. By the way, Brooke, I might be coming to San Diego here shortly. We'll be announcing that soon. I'm also going to let you guys know a couple of dates that are coming up too. So you can just uh, take note of that. I want to ask you guys a question. If your life was known and read by everyone, what would the aftermath of that look like? What would the aftermath of that look like? If your life was known and read by everyone. And when the scripture talks about things like, you know, living above reproach, well, that's what it means. We should live in a way that our life can be known and read by everyone. I'll go to the next verse. It says, this is 2 Corinthians 3, 3. It is clear that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And I'll stop there. There are so many people that don't feel qualified, don't feel worthy to be used by God. But I'm here to tell you, the blood of Jesus says you don't have to feel qualified and you don't have to feel worthy because your value is not determined by how you feel. And I feel like the Holy Spirit wants you to know today that you need to remember that your value 
is not determined by how you feel because th thank God it's not because how many days do you feel up or do you wake up feeling like, oh, you know, dread or, or worry or concern, you know, your value is not determined by how, how you feel. Your value is determined by the blood of Jesus. And I feel like the Lord wanted me to tell you today that you need to begin to view yourself as a letter just like this. A letter written by him, not with ink, but, but with the spirit of the living God that should be able to be known and read by everyone. And, uh, and then this is what you are. You are a living, your life is to serve as a living epistle. So you got the Holy Scriptures. And then let's say one day, you know, 100 years from now, if you're not on the earth anymore, but somebody reads the story of your life, are they going to be like, man, that was just a continuation of the epistles and the book of Acts. And this is something that I've had people say for a lot of years when they would come to my meetings around the world. I would say, you are the sequel to the book of Acts. Even Church 14, the name of our community and ministry, that means an Acts chapter 14 people, right? But a lot of people were so distracted with the cares of life and trying to make ends meet and, you know, dealing with all the stuff that comes up in our lives that we feel like, well, you know what? I don't have a ministry, so I'm just going to give once in a while to people who do. Well, that's good. You should give to people that have ministries, but you also have a mandate. You also are son and daughter of God. And you also are to be a living epistle for the world to read and see. And so one of the things that I want to, I just want to submit to you guys is right now in your life. And by the way, if this if is blessing you, please give it a share. Um, right now in your life, are you confident in the fruit that that's following you around? You know what I mean? Are you confident in, um, let's say, the aftermath of the things that you've recently been walking in? Are they going to leave a negative mark on the world? Or are they going to leave a, you know, a, a godly, glorious mark on the world? And this is where the Holy Spirit wants to walk with you and help you improve. Now, you know, one of the ways that we want to help is we have the Church 14 community. It's a global community, but, you know, it's, it's based here in Myrtle Beach and online. We have a Facebook group, actually, that you can join. Me and my wife go live every single week in that group, and we unpack different things, and we pray for you, and we take all your prayer requests, and we know that we can't do, do it for you, and we can't, you know, we're not the answer to everything, but there's a lot of amazing, you know, things going on right now, and the fabric of ministry and church and all that has shifted a lot. There's been a lot of reform come to the prophetic movements, and there's been a lot of reform come to uh, the evangelistic, you know, modern evangelistic circles. And I, you know, at heart, I've always been really majorly an evangelist, and over the last few years, begun to walk in some other of the, you know, the fivefold stuff. But this stuff's not just for us, it's for everyone, and we want to help you any way that we, we can serve you. We love to do that. So we have a group on Facebook. It's Church 14 Online uh, Community. Church 14 Community Online, actually. If you search that, go ahead and request to join the group. And, you know, we go live every week in there as well. And there's a couple of questions that I want to ask you guys that I felt like the Lord just put on my heart and said, have them ponder this. Have them uh, mull over this. Have them sleep on this. All right. And number one is, do you guys have... Do you have, I want to ask you personally, do you have a mission statement for your life? Do you have a mission? Now, do you have a mission statement for your life? That doesn't mean, you know, it has to be some big wild thing that you feel like you're never going to accomplish or you're trying to fake it till you make it or something like that. You know, uh, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling every day, daily walking with Jesus, daily being obedient to the Holy Spirit. But I want to encourage you, write, even if it's one sentence, like what is your personal vision for your life? You know, we don't know how long we're going to have on this earth. And it's important to get focused on what we feel like God has said to walk in. And, uh, and there's no condemnation, you know, for you if you haven't done that up to this point or anything like that. But I want to encourage you guys, all right? 
right out of, even if it's like, hey, Diane, good to see you. It was so awesome to meet you last night, by the way. Thank you for coming. Um, Taylor says, I'm going to sleep on that, but I want to help people see their self-worth made in the image of God. Uh, no one deserves. And let me see if I can catch the rest of these comments here. She says, no one deserves to be abused or to hurt themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Taylor, I love that. And so if you could write out one statement, I want to help people see their self-worth. So my life uh, mission, what I feel like, what, what I want at the end of my life, what I want people to say, this was the fruit of her life is I want, to, I want to help people see their self-worth, that they are made in the image of God, and that they don't deserve to be abused or to hurt themselves. That, that's incredible. And to me, that emulates the heart of the Father, that, um, that is in line with who Jesus is. And, uh, and that's some amazing fruit. I want to have that same fruit, you know, in my life. Um, and then secondly, I want to encourage you guys, and this is prophetic. When you make a declaration like this, you're, you're, you're declaring over your life prophetically that this is what God has called forth from the end is from the beginning. This is what I believe. And then he's going to work out all the details. Okay. You don't have to worry about the details, but, um, secondly, I want you to ask, yourself, what would it look like? What would it look like if this mission came, uh, was, if life was blown into this mission, what would it look like in my day-to-day -day life? What would it look like long-term? All right. And so, uh, then what you can do is each day, just take little baby steps. If you only have 20 minutes to put toward it because of your other responsibilities, that's still 20 minutes every single day that you're putting into, you know, seeing this thing come to pass in your life. And then thirdly, you know, the scripture admonishes us to know those that labor among you. Now, I've learned some hard lessons in this area over the years. And at points, we're all going to learn hard lessons in, in these areas too, okay? But see, when that tension comes, that's when you grow. I mean, that's really where you grow is when, when there's tension put on that muscle is when you grow, when it, when it grows. In fact, when there's, um, when there's defeat in a sense, when there's, you know, if you're, if you're working out and that muscle, you, uh, you come to max capacity and it gives out, I know it hurts, but it's actually going to, what's really going to strengthen. And that's where the growth is going to come from. And so know those that labor among you, but um, what, what type of circles and type of people would you want to get around where there would be iron sharpening iron to where these things can begin to really, uh, where the Holy Spirit can really begin to, to bring these things to, uh, to fruition. And, and I want you to pray into that and begin to thank God for open doors. If you need to be around authors, Lord, thank you for putting me around godly authors whose lives are above reproach and who have cutting edge downloads from heaven that help set people free and help people, you know, come into freedom or, or whatever it is that you live with. Lord, thank you for putting me around people that go to hard to reach nations where there are tribes that have still never heard about Jesus. Lord, thank you. You know, how could you begin to thank God and make declarations over your life and watch these doors open. What would it sound like? What would it look like? I want you to write this stuff down. I want you to write this stuff down. And, you know, if you have a prayer journal, put it in your prayer journal. Um, and then, lastly, actually, I want to read this scripture one more time to you guys, but I'm going to read it in a different version. 2 Corinthians 3.2. You are our letter written in our heart and known and read by everyone. The Bible, these, these holy scriptures, were literally just the beginning. What did, what did John say about Jesus? If, if, if books were written about all the things that he did, all the pages in, in the world wouldn't be able to contain it, right? Um, the, script, the holy scriptures are literally the beginning and the foundation 
the show us God's relation to humanity and, and his covenants and what a relationship with him is supposed to look like and how we're to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. But now that it is finished, where Jesus said it is finished, right, is literally your starting line. And now, now it, it, I don't care if you're 27 right now, if you're 52, if you're 68, I don't care if you're 83, I don't care if you're 15 and you're watching this. You have a starting line in front of you right now. And I had, I really would love you guys to go check, listen to that dream I had. Um, not that it's the most important dream in the world or that, you know, it, I don't know that when you listen to my dream as opposed to someone else's dream, it's going to have some supernatural effect for you because it's me or something. It's nothing like that. But I think it would encourage you. I'd love for you to go listen to it again. Uh, it was in our gathering last night. If you watch the uh, Church 14 gathering. But really the essence of it was don't be distracted. Have you guys ever tried to write a book and gotten a writer's block or been distracted? Well, listen, when God is writing this living epistle that is your life, he, he's not getting distracted. He's not getting distracted. He knows what he's doing. Each chapter, he's penning it beautifully. But when we... Um, get this when we yield to distractions and we allow, let's say, the enemy to attack our mind or whatever, and we begin to get off course, it can cause. I want to just, I want to admonish you guys as a brother in Christ. It can cost years, it can cost you years of your life when you get off course. And that's not to say there's not God's grace isn't sufficient and he brings you back to home. But there, there will be a lot of unnecessary obstacles. All right, let's just put it that way. And I'm talking to you and I'm telling you that because I know from experience. Okay. And so um, we plan, we make our plans, but God directs our steps. You are, are his letter inscribed that he's inscribing on people's hearts to be known and read by everyone. What, uh, what kind of value is this story going to impart to the world, to the church, to people who don't know Jesus yet, whatever it might be? Um, so that's really a lot of my thoughts for you guys right now. I just wanted to come on for a few minutes because, like I said, it's been a long time since I've done anything on this page. And I feel like this is what the Lord wanted me to do on this page today. But I'm going to take a minute and oh, uh, what, look at this. I'm going to give you one more scripture. Romans 1.8. Romans 1.8. I love this. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Come on. Again, it's like this living epistle that is read throughout the entire world. And we, we, we can't afford to be caught up in the affairs of this world, guys. We can't afford to be distracted. We can't afford to be worrying and fearing, even if you're going through it right now. And listen, I know some of you are going through it right now, all right? I, I get it, okay? But even if you're going through it right now, your value to God doesn't change. Whether you're being abused, whether you're doing the abusing, you need to repent and you need to get right with God, but your value to God doesn't change. All right. Um, and you might be going through it right now, but I feel like the Lord wants you to know just because you're going through it right now does not mean that you're not moldable clay in his hands does not mean that he's going to give up on you. Even if you're the one making the stupid decisions and you know it still doesn't mean God's going to give up on you. In fact, he's never going to give up on you and he's already reconciled you. We step in, but a lot of times the battle, like, you know, what it says, like what we talked about last night, Colossians 1, they were separated in their minds. And when a separation occurs first in your mind, it's only a matter of time before that is fully manifest in every, in every way possible, where there's that separation, where there's that weirdness. Have you guys ever noticed that you might think because of what someone posted on social media that somebody doesn't like you? But really, in, real, in reality, you have no idea if they don't like you. You just feel like, oh, they posted that about me. Has this ever happened to you? And then you begin, you separate yourself in your mind. This is exactly what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden, guys. You separate yourself in your mind. And then whenever you see that person in public, it feels weird. There's weirdness. 
And that person might be thinking, man, they must not like me anymore. I don't know why there's weirdness. You're feeling weirdness because you've separated yourself in your mind. And now you're going to try to avoid that person altogether. I see this all the time, pastoring and doing ministry stuff, guys, you know. But I want to encourage you, if you're going to allow that weirdness with God, feeling like, ah, just, yeah, maybe I'll just stop trying to, because ah, yeah, I'm just not that good, or I'm just not good enough for him, or he must not really like me. You're going to, you're going to have that same pattern that's going to go with, you know, with people as well. And a lot of it could be right in your head the whole time, but you're, believe, you're the one believing lies. God's not, here's the thing is God's not going to lie to you. God's never going to lie to you. But you can easily lie to yourself. You can easily receive a lie from the enemy that's t just a lie. But it doesn't really give root to anything until it's received. And so what are you receiving right now? And there are some of you saying, you know what? Seven years ago, I had a, def a definitive mission statement for my life. And seven year here I am seven years later. And I don't know what, I what the heck I've done. Listen, it's okay, okay? There's grace for you. I just speak mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord. There's grace for you. There's mercy for you, okay? But let's just circle back, circle back and say, Holy Spirit, I'm ready again. Holy Spirit, empower me right now. I believe I'm full of your power. I, if, if there's stuff that you've been doing, been meandering and living for your own appetites, get rid of it, confess it to God, call someone you trust and say, you know what, I've been messing around and this is personal, but can you pray for me? Because I'm done. I'm done messing around. All right. There really is a clarion call right now for God's people. Stop being distracted. Be so enamored on the love of Jesus that nothing else matters. That that you don't have you don't have a, a, a skin in the game. You don't have any skin in the game to be tangled in worldly affairs because you're too in love with Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? You're too on fire. You're too ravished by his grace to be worried about all this other stuff and to be getting distracted. So I just want to pray for you guys real quick. I, I pray that this is ministering to you. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you so much for all of our friends and loved ones and, and ministry partners and your amazing people around the world that, that may come across this video or who are watching live right now. Lord, I ask you to empower them in Jesus' mighty name. Empower them. Let them realize again the grace that you have put on their life to live above reproach and to be living epistles that the whole world would read and that they would see their faith in action. Father, I thank you right now that you're calling a new generation of, of, of grace-filled evangelists. Lord, that you're calling a new generation of grace-filled prophets uh, out of the Gen Z generation and the Gen Alpha generation. Father, I thank you for a fresh grace for teachers and a fresh grace for ap apostolic workers, apostles, and a fresh grace for pastors. You know, there's some of you watching right now, you're saying, man, I grew up knowing this pastor and that pastor. I would never want to be a pastor. Well, you know what? Maybe you're going to redefine. Maybe you're going to redefine it. Maybe God's going to give you a special grace to pastor. Um, not that so that you can reinvent the wheel, but so that you can help people realize the grace that's actually available to do what God has put on their life. And some of you, you don't even know what grace God has put on your life, but he's about to show you. He's going to show you in a dream. He's going to show you in a vision. And, and, and you're, you're going to say, you know what, Lord, I don't know how to make this happen in the natural. I don't have steps to follow, but I'm diving into this ocean of grace. Lead me. Just lead me. Show me how to breathe underwater. <laughs> you know, um, so Father, in Jesus name, we seal it. We say thank you. I rebuke the spirit of distraction, that ideology, the thoughts that would come to distract those old Adamic thoughts, that old Adamic mind is dead in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for the mind of Christ. Lord, we thank you for your power even right now on the live stream over the airwaves. Lord, we take authority over sickness and disease and affliction, mental illness. Father, we thank you that Jesus put it in its place 2,000 years ago in Jesus' mighty name right now. If you've got pain in your body, Lord, we command that pain to leave now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And I've got one word for somebody. This is going to be the last one. And if this is you, we would love to hear from you. You know, you can send us an email, info at church14.com. 
Um, you can uh, go in our group, Church 14 Community Online, request to join that group on Facebook, and then you can post in that group and we will respond. Um, but there's someone watching and you saying, you know what, I was head, I was, uh, um, how can I say this? What's, there's like a term, like head over, he not head over heels, but I was hook, line, and sinker, right on par with what God wanted for my life. I was doing it. I was seeing the fruit. I was seeing the, 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 the sick healed and I was going after it. And then the rug was pulled right out under my feet. And then the rug was pulled right out under my feet. And you, and you say, and, I, and I've been lost. I, I, I don't know what to do. I feel, I feel lost. Well, you know what? You're the perfect candidate because you may feel like the, the rug was pulled out under your feet, but Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Right? You might feel like the rug was pulled out under your feet, but you know what? People, fallen people make rugs anyway. So, Father, I pray for a fresh empowerment in the mighty name of Jesus for our friend. If that's you, you know who you are. Lord, I thank you. That, that rug was, was shifting sand anyway, and you're planting them now on the rock, and you're establishing them, and you're strengthening them, and you're settling them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Hey, Denise, good to see you. I hope you're doing awesome. Bless you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Kathy, bless you. Welcome. Christopher, welcome. So, whew, I feel the power. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Okay, guys, so I just want to give you a few announcements real quick. If you are in the Fort Mill, South Carolina area, uh, my beautiful bride, the Rev. Millie Joy, she's going to be coming and speaking in Fort Mill, South Carolina on October the 19th at the God Show Me event. If you want more info on that, go ahead and comment on the video or, again, post in our group. Um, so we've got that coming up. Our community meets every Saturday night here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at 6 p.m. We meet currently at Ignite Church. We love Ignite Church. They're so awesome. They've been such a blessing. We thank God for them. Um, and then uh, on October the 5th, we're going to be doing baptisms here in Myrtle Beach in the ocean. We've got people signing up to be baptized, some for the first time and some because they didn't know what it meant the first time, but they're ready again and it's been years or whatever it might be. Also, we've got a few other events coming up. Me and, and my wife, Millie, are going to prayerfully begin to open up our schedule to more, um, tra you know, a little bit more traveling here and there. We're going to, uh, we've actually got numerous invitations right now. So we're going to, I want you to, you guys to know, we're going to pray on every single invitation and we may not take all of them, but we are actively praying on these invitations. And if you're interested in hosting us, you know, at your church or your conference or your mission trip or whatever it is, please send us an email, info at church14.com. So in the coming uh, month, I'm going to be announcing some new dates. And if you'd love to see us in your area or you know of a church or ministry that would love to host us, uh, please, again, give us a shout out. Or if you're in the Myrtle Beach area, we would love for you to come and visit our community at the Church 14 um, Community Hub. Okay, so... That's just a couple of updates. And then the last thing is I want to just invite you guys to partner with uh, with the ministry. If it's been a blessing to you over the years. Now, some of you have partnered with us for many years. OK, and 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 we're so thankful we can't do that without you and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But um, if you're feeling generous, you're feeling like the Lord might want you or become a partner. We always want to open that up and invite you guys to lock arms with us as we go into the world. And I mean all the world. And you know, the vision of Church 14, just so you know, it's to equip, to cultivate a five-fold Christian community around the world and to cultivate and raise up modern day disciples to walk in the realities of Christ in this life and prepare them to walk in those realities in the next life. And so we've got a strong mandate. And if you don't have a mandate and you say, you know what, I want to line up with that, that's fine too. We'd love for you to get more involved with Church 14. But um, but we want to invite you to partner with the ministry, which allows us to continue moving forward and continue taking these invitations and going to hard places. And by the way, if you follow me on TikTok, I just posted never before seen footage from our recent ministry trip, which was really crazy book of acts 
modern day Book of Acts stuff into Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and the United Arab Emirates. If you guys want to see that, go and head over to my TikTok. Uh, my name on TikTok is Rad Rev Rob, and the Rad is from my last name, Radosti, which is actually Radosti in the Slavic. R A D. So Rad Rev Rob. It's kind of a little bit of a tongue twister. R A D R E V R O B on TikTok. If you guys want to see that, check it out. Um, now, I didn't post a lot of details because there are some people we need to protect, but we saw God opening deaf ears on that trip. We saw people getting baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time. We had pagans and witches and warlocks coming to Jesus. It was absolutely phenomenal. And this should be just everyday stuff for 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 sons and daughters of God. Amen. So if you want to partner with us, guys, go to church14.com. There's a few different ways that you can give. You can sign up as a monthly partner, which means you set apart unto the Lord a certain amount each month, whether it's whatever the Holy Spirit puts on your heart, $30, $50, $10. Nothing is stupid and nothing is too small. And then there's other ways where you can give, you know, by PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, uh, Cash App, all that. I will go ahead and put those links in the in the comments as well for any of you that feel led to give. But again, thank you so much. We pray a thousandfold increase to you in Jesus' mighty name. And we love you and we hope to see you here in Myrtle Beach. We'll see you soon and we'll continue to bring you guys updates. All right. Love you guys. Peace in Jesus' name.